Number 10. Venom's first full appearance was in The Amazing Spider-Man issue number 300 in May 1988. This supervillain character was created by writer David Michelinie and artists Todd McFarlane and Mike Zack. Initially, Venom was portrayed as a symbiotic alien life form that bonds with disgraced journalist Eddie Brock, creating a powerful and vengeful antagonist for Spider-Man. <sighs> Number 9. Venom's symbiote originates from a race known as the Clintar. The Clintar are a race of symbiotic organisms that bond with hosts for survival and seek out hosts who have similar negative emotions, such as anger or hatred. They are known for their ability to enhance the physical attributes of their hosts while also influencing their emotions and behavior. Number 8. Venom, as a symbiote, possesses a variety of powers, many of which are derived from its host, Eddie Brock. Some of Venom's powers include Superhuman Strength Venom possesses immense physical strength, enabling him to overpower most opponents and lift heavy objects. Superhuman Speed and Agility Venom can move at incredible speeds and possesses remarkable agility, allowing him to dodge attacks and move swiftly in combat. While crawling, like Spider-Man, Venom can cling to and crawl on vertical surfaces and ceilings. Shape-shifting. The symbiote can alter its shape and form weapons, tendrils, or other appendages as needed in combat. Regeneration. Venom has a remarkable ability to heal from injuries rapidly, making him highly durable in battle. Enhanced durability. The symbiote provides its host with increased resistance to physical and energy-based attacks. Webbing generation. Venom can produce webbing similar to Spider-Man which he can use to ensnare opponents or swing from buildings. Spider-Sense While not as refined as Spider-Man's Spider-Sense, Venom possesses a limited form of danger sense, allowing him to anticipate and react to threats. An added bonus for Venom is Spider-Man's Spider-Sense does not work warning when Venom is about to attack him. Number 7. The Venom Symbiote like many symbiotes in the Marvel Universe, is vulnerable to fire. Fire can cause significant harm to the symbiote and its host, making it a potent weapon against Venom in battles. This weakness has been exploited by various characters in the comics to gain an advantage over Venom. In addition to being weak against fire, the Venom symbiote is also vulnerable to certain frequencies of sound. Loud noises, particularly high-pitched sounds, can disorient or weaken the symbiote and its host, making them susceptible to attacks. This weakness has been depicted in various Venom storylines where sound-based weapons or sonic vibrations are used against him. <sighs> Number 6. Some of the notable offspring of Venom in Marvel Comics include Carnage, also known as Cletus Cassidy, is one of the most notorious and dangerous symbiotes. He is the offspring of Venom and bonded with serial killer Cletus Cassidy, becoming even more powerful and unstable than his parent symbiote. Toxin Toxin is another symbiote offspring of Venom, created when the Carnage symbiote bonded with police officer Patrick Mulligan. Toxin possesses abilities similar to Venom and Carnage but has a more heroic inclination, often fighting against other symbiotes and villains. Riot, Agony, Lasher, Phage, and Scream these symbiotes are collectively known as the Life Foundation symbiotes. They were created from Venom cells by the Life Foundation in an attempt to create superpowered soldiers. Each symbiote has its own unique abilities and characteristics. Hybrid Hybrid is a symbiote created from the Life Foundation symbiotes, combined with elements of Venom and Carnage. It was bonded to a group of government agents known as the Mercury Team. Number 5 Flash Thompson, a character known primarily for his role as Peter Parker's high school bully turned friend, became the Venom symbiote's most notable host in a series published by Marvel Comics. In this storyline, Flash Thompson, who lost his legs while serving in the military, becomes the host of the Venom symbiote as part of a government program known as Project Rebirth 2.0. As Venom, Flash Thompson retains his military training and sense of duty, using the symbiote's powers as a force for good. Unlike previous hosts, Flash is able to maintain control over the symbiote by using a special suit designed by the government, which helps him keep the symbiote's violent urges in check. During his time as Venom, Flash Thompson operated as a government-sanctioned superhero, 
serving as a member of the Secret Avengers and working closely with other Marvel heroes. His tenure as Venom marked a significant departure from the character's previous antagonistic role and provided new depth to both the Venom symbiote and Flash Thompson himself. Number 4. In addition to the primary hosts of Venom in Marvel Comics, such as Eddie Brock and Flash Thompson, several other individuals have temporarily become hosts to the Venom symbiote or variants of it. Some notable examples include Mac Gargan, also known as the Scorpion, became the third host of the Venom symbiote after Eddie Brock. As Venom, he retained his Scorpion powers and used the symbiote's abilities to enhance his strength and agility. And Wang, Eddie Brock's ex-wife, briefly bonded with the Venom symbiote in an attempt to save her own life. As she Venom, she displayed similar powers and abilities to Venom but struggled with the symbiote's violent urges. Angelo Fortunato was a teenage mobster who briefly bonded with the Venom symbiote after it was forcibly removed from Eddie Brock. However, he proved unworthy of the symbiote and was killed by it when it abandoned him midair. Lee Price is a former soldier who bonded with the Venom symbiote after it was separated from Flash Thompson. Unlike previous hosts, Price struggled with controlling the symbiote's violent tendencies and used its powers for criminal purposes. These are just a few examples of individuals who have temporarily become hosts for the Venom symbiote or its offspring in Marvel Comics. I hope you're enjoying this video. Before we get to the top 3, please could you take a moment to like and subscribe to my channel as it would be a great help. Number 3 Venom has been associated with several teams in Marvel Comics, including Thunderbolts, Flash Thompson, while bonded with the Venom symbiote, joined the Thunderbolts, a team of reformed villains working as government-sanctioned operatives. Guardians of the Galaxy, Flash Thompson served as a member of the Guardians of the Galaxy for a time, operating alongside other cosmic heroes to defend the universe from threats. Savage Six this was a group of villains that included Venom as one of its members during a storyline in which Flash Thompson was operating as Venom. Sinister Six, at times, Venom has been coerced or manipulated into joining the Sinister Six, a team of Spider-Man villains assembled to take down the wall crawler. Dark Avengers, in some storylines, Venom has been a member of the Dark Avengers, a team of anti-heroes and villains posing as the heroic Avengers under Norman Osborn's leadership. <laughs> Number 2. In the Marvel Comics universe, the Venom symbiote is depicted as an alien organism belonging to a species known as the Clintar. The Venom symbiote is considered a rogue or outcast member of its species because it exhibits traits and behaviors that are not typical of the Clintar race. One significant aspect of Venom's characterization is its tendency to bond with hosts in a parasitic manner, amplifying the negative emotions and desires of its hosts. This behavior is frowned upon by the Clintar Society, which values symbiotic relationships based on mutual respect and cooperation. Due to its divergence from the norms of Clintar Society, Venom is often portrayed as an outcast or renegade member of its species, frequently clashing with other symbiotes and seeking out new hosts in its quest for survival and fulfillment. Number 1 Randy Schuler submitted the concept of a new black costume for Spider-Man to Marvel Comics through the Spider-Man Costume Contest in the early 1980s. His design, along with several others, was considered for use in the comics. Eventually, the black costume concept was developed further by Marvel's creative team, leading to the introduction of the symbiote and the iconic black-suited Spider-Man which later led to the invention of Venom. Thanks for watching. I hope you learned something from the video and we'll see you on the next one.